offshore wind, solar. Dominion Energy is a leader in the clean energy transition. We're dedicated to providing reliable, affordable, safe, and clean energy as we support and invest in our communities in 16 states. Dominion Energy is building a clean energy future. Actions speak louder. Welcome to Actions Speak Louder, shining a light on Dominion Energy's projects and community support. I'm Peggy Fox. We've got a great show for you today, looking at the incredible transformation of a tiny town that was literally being destroyed by traffic. Imagine living on a two-lane main street that's so overwhelmed with constant commuter traffic that it feels like a highway in front of your homes. There's nowhere to walk safely because there are no sidewalks. Speeding cars and trucks at all hours seem to be swallowing your town. My studio guest doesn't have to imagine. Roger Vance is the mayor of Hillsborough, Virginia in western Loudoun County, about 50 miles outside of Washington, D.C. Welcome, Roger. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Peggy. Thanks for having us here. So how long did you work on this project? Uh, I've been mayor for 18 years, and uh, prior to that, I was town, town council. So we, this project has really been in the works for 20 years. It's amazing. So how small is Hillsboro? What's the population? Our population is about 120. Wow. And you just completed uh, several projects, but the big one, it all cost $34 million? Uh, yes, yeah, when you roll everything together from early design to, to completion, yeah, it's about $34 million. It's really astonishing. How did you get this done? Well, you know, you're really right. Uh, in reality, Hillsborough did face a, a true existential threat mm. uh, through these public health, public safety uh, uh, issues that were uh, attacking the town and, and suffering from that heavy commuter traffic. Right. So it just took, uh, it took a lot of work. That's what it took to really <laughs> yeah. make it happen. I know, I'm asking you to <laughs> sum it up in a minute. You can't do it because it took right, 18 years. Right. But, but you know, one thing you did, I, I, when I went out to your ribbon cutting, we'll show everybody that in a minute, but you labeled your project Rethink 9. Correct, yes, and, we and did. And it's Route yeah. 9, and I love the um, statement on the back is, proceed as if success is inevitable. Proceed as if success is inevitable. Why did you pick that phrase and brand it this way? Well, there are two reasons. One, uh, you know, Route 9 for decades had a notorious reputation mm -hmm. for, you know, danger and, you know, unsafe conditions and accidents. Uh, and the town of Hillsboro uh, was under a boil water uh, notice for 20 years. And, you know, we had all, we were besieged by all of these the, all of these problems. Uh, so, likewise, they'd been talked about for 30 years. Yeah. Okay, so nothing really was, was happening, and there was a, frankly, it appeared to many people, even those who are our most ardent supporters, that it would never happen. They couldn't believe it could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, really, the uh, Rethink 9 was really to provide a vision for people to just imagine right. what it could be Wrap if we were able it. to do all of these all of these multiple projects as one. Uh, and the mantra, proceed as if success is inevitable, really was a, it was an internal uh, <laughs> message that we kept telling ourselves because, you know, it could get very frustrating and, you know, it could be very hard. Uh, but we just had to keep telling ourselves that uh, no matter what obstacle we hit or how frustrated and tired we would get, you know, we always had to believe success really was inevitable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it proves it proves the point. If you have a vision and you believe yeah. that you can get there, others will see that maybe it is possible. So. I just love it. I love the whole, you know, the, the idea that, you, well, I mean, it's just this, you're right. People never thought it was going to change. You no. know, just shrug no. your shoulder. Oh, well, things are never going to change. How are things going to change? We have 120 people who live here. Right. You know, right. we don't have the money for this. In, uh, intractable right. problems that mm. you were, mm. we were facing. Yeah. So it really is incredible. Um, and we're going to get to how they did it. We have people standing by to explain how this all happened, this amazing project. You recently won a couple of state awards for not you. Yes, this town yes, and also yeah. Volkert. Yes, the uh, Virginia Transportation uh, Construction Alliance is the, you know, uh, construction firms across Virginia mm -hmm. uh, presented uh, the town and Volkert Engineering with uh, their uh, award for projects, uh, non-VDOT 
yep. projects over ten million dollars. Mm. So uh, Volker was, you know, bestowed that award for the design effort. Uh, and just last week, uh, the Virginia Municipal League uh, awarded the town with the Innovation Award for Economic Development mm -hmm. for the project itself. Well, so congratulations! I like that. what they said. Were uh, the projects were uh, rated based on aesthetics, the ability to meet community needs cost effectiveness, adherence to schedule, and application of technology. Yes. <laughs> so we're yes. going to be talking about all that. Hey, we also have Vice Mayor, Hillsborough Vice Mayor, Amy Morasco on Zoom. Thanks for being here, Amy. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Hey, so you and Roger are considered this amazing, dynamic duo. Do you believe that you two literally saved the town? Was it this existential threat? <laughs> well, I was, you, know, you could certainly say it that way. But what we saw 20 years ago was uh, vacant homes, mm -hmm. uh, homes on the market. Uh, and as Roger said, we had many uh, infrastructure problems mm -hmm. that were making our town really unviable and certainly not sustainable for the future. So yes, with a large, good team of people, I believe that we not only saved this town, but we kept it to its historic integrity. And then underground, it's a 21st century technology town. Yay. So we are ready for another 100 years. Yay, and I know it took lots of partners. But let me give people a little bit of background here. You know, these two leaders of a town with uh, only 120 residents, just they managed to secure $34 million in federal, state, and local money for several projects that I, I think literally did save the town. So here's a little background on Hillsboro, Virginia, the historic town that was established before the American Revolution in 1752. Settled before the American Revolution, Hillsboro was a bustling center for commerce and trade and a transportation hub for one of America's richest agricultural regions. Nestled in a gap on a key travel route through the Blue Ridge Mountains, Hillsboro prospered and thrived for more than a century. At the end of the 1800s, Hillsboro was changing and slowing down. Railroads bypassed the town and the town's commerce and trade declined. By 1995, the sleepy town in rural northwest Loudoun County faced change again. Development was occurring all around. In town, decaying infrastructure threatened at public health, and Hillsboro was besieged by an ever-growing flood of commuter traffic. Regional growth turned Hillsboro's narrow main street into a congested commuter corridor where it was no longer safe to even cross the street. The challenges for this small town with its limited financial resources seemed overwhelming. Building needed infrastructure as individual projects was untenable as it would dramatically increase costs and extend construction for years. The town needed a consolidated plan, partners, and funding. In 2004, town leaders launched an ambitious plan to tackle traffic and its infrastructure challenges. They brought in experts, wrote grants, attended hundreds of meetings, conferences, and workshops, all while telling the story of Hillsboro. A concept evolved. A solution took shape. Reclaiming Hillsboro's Main Street had begun. Hillsboro's story took hold. The request for partnerships was being heard. The ask was clear. Build it once, build it now. By 2015, traffic topped 17,000 vehicle trips a day with significant congestion during every morning and evening rush hour. Loudoun County was first to step up with a funding commitment, and town leaders stepped up too, taking ownership of the road project and embracing the adage, proceed as if success is inevitable. The town then turned to the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. Hillsboro was included in NVTA's transaction plan in 2017 and was poised to apply for funding in NVTA's first six-year plan. At the pivotal May 2018 NVTA public hearing, more than two dozen community representatives arrived on a charter bus to make their case. The Hillsboro Project made NVTA's cut, and the Loudoun County Board of Supervisors offered the balance of funding needed to make the project real. The hard work began as the project's design engineers, Volkert, artfully knitted all the projects into one, 
And in the fall of 2019, Hillsborough awarded a contract to the construction firm Archer Western. On March 6, 2020, hundreds were on hand, including Miss America, to move some dirt and celebrate the official start of construction. Everything was underway, and then a global pandemic hit. Facing a public health crisis and seeing dramatically reduced traffic, Hillsboro, VDOT, the Virginia Department of Health, Volkert, and Archer Western pivoted, and Route 9 in the town of Hillsboro was closed to provide a safe work zone. In early May, Hillsboro became one large and complex work zone with crews deployed end to end, bringing a new water system online and completing major excavation in the summer. Talented masons built the walls to retain the roadway. Excavation crews built the utility duct banks and buried the vaults and manholes. Stormwater teams buried a system of structures to manage millions of gallons of water flowing off the Short Hill Mountain. Concrete crews poured gutter pans and sidewalk foundations. Electricians brought down traffic signals as roundabouts emerged. Utilities pulled cables through conduits and began splicing. The installation of raised crosswalks began. Substantial completion of the project was achieved in May 2021 and Route 9 was reopened for all motorists 24-7. From design and engineering to materials and methods, financial controls and administrative coordination, Team Hillsboro had delivered on time and on budget. They met their goal. They built it once and they built it right. So Mayor Vance and Vice Mayor Amy Morasco, thank you both very much for shedding light on all this. Now, you, you mentioned briefly it was more than just the traffic. It was more than just the fact you didn't have sidewalks. That enough right there is, is huge, a, a very difficult problem to right. surmount when you're a small town with very little money coming in. What other problems did you have? You mentioned water problems. You, you, Hillsboro was under a boil water order? Right. We were under a consent order for nearly 20 years. Uh, basically to find a new water source. Mm. The town had been supplied by, by a spring up on the mountain mm -hmm. uh, since its inception. Uh, that sounds for over, lovely. For but. over 200 <laughs> years. Uh, and uh, so it supplied, it was our municipal water system source. So uh, we struggled for many, many years to find the funding and find the uh, alternate water source. Uh, the other public health issue was uh, all of these homes uh, were on private septics mm. or still are on private septic systems. So the inevitability of uh, environmental uh, catastrophe for many of these homes uh, was there. And because of the nature of the, of the homes themselves and the small lots, there really wasn't an alternative. Uh, so we, in fact, had, had people still who every week have to have a uh, have their systems pumped out. Mm. Uh, and so uh, that was a, a major issue. And then also uh, we are at the, uh, uh, at the bottom of base of, a, of the large mountain. So stormwater management, there was absolutely no effective stormwater management. So uh, the road would get inundated, our homes would get inundated with, with rainwater, mm -hmm. you know, coming off the mountain. So that combined with the uh, inability of anybody to safely walk the street or cross the street uh, and the uh, speed and congestion that we were facing uh, every day, uh, those, those kinds of safety issues, uh, you know, they all combine to be, mm -hmm. you know, quite a, quite a large uh, task to, to <laughs> take on, I would say. And, and, uh, and eventually, you know, when we looked at it as individual projects, you know, we, we started out looking at it that way, but ultimately uh, the ability to look at it as one large uh, infrastructure project mm -hmm. uh, saved millions of dollars and years of, years of time mm -hmm. uh, and, and also really brought together the whole idea of Rethink 9. Mm -hmm. We could do this and we could in one stroke transform you know, this historic village. Incredible. Okay, so let's bring in Matt McLaughlin. He was the utilities project manager, and he's with CES Consulting, which was the uh, main contractor with Volker. We've mentioned Volker. So, Matt, um, 
uh, it was your job to tie all these projects together. And, and I'm with Dominion Energy, so we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth with one of our engineers about how you put the utilities underground. But you had to deal with all of that, Matt. And while you're talking, uh, we are going to be showing some of the time-lapse time videos that show the before and after along Route 9 through Hillsboro. So, Matt, tell me, what were some of the big challenges in your mind? Well, some of the biggest challenges was we had to create this uh, very complex design for the uh, duck bank, which picked up power telephone and a town fiber. And we had to fit that within a very congested uh, roadway section that has upgraded drainage, uh, raw water, potable water, as well as the sanitary sewer system. So we had to do a lot of things in a very small area. So there was challenges to not only the design and then going through construction. So mm -hmm. we had to be very creative on the resolutions to look for those successful outcomes. And we worked as a team with a design engineer, with utility companies, designers, as well as a contractor to find those uh, resolutions and it created a very successful outcome. Yeah. Hey, uh, we've got Chris Martin on and he is a uh, electrical engineer with Dominion Energy is retired now, and I know Matt worked with Chris. Chris, tell me a little bit about how you know your involvement here and the design, and and just how unique was it, Chris? Well, as Matt mentioned, it was um, a, a real. It, there was a lot going on. There was um, an eastern and a western roundabout um, being constructed, and the underground conversion of the overhead in, in town, mm -hmm. which was, like Matt said, there was really no room to do anything on the properties other than set bad amount of transformers. Everything else was in the duck bank system, had to be on the um, on the right of way, manholes, duck bank, um, mm -hmm. termination boxes. So yeah, it was, um, it, it was challenging. <laughs> And um, what struck me most is, um, it, it, and what made it unique, my thought was that um, when I first got on board and we had meetings, um, I was one of those ones thinking, wow, how, how does all this get done in the amount of time we want to do it uh, and, and yeah. with the amount of work to do? But every meeting we went to, um, every every meeting uh, the mayor sat in on, and you know, after a while, it didn't take long to uh, to realize that this was a small town, but it really had big expectations, and um, it it wasn't something that uh, we were all motivated. I think I can speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for everybody, but I think we were all motivated by the fact that. Uh, it, the town was going to get this done and we better make sure we do our part um, regardless of the challenges, which there were many. Right. Um, but any, um, any challenge, uh, any issues that came up, uh, the town, the mayor, the uh, group that he had working with him, his okay. team, we came, the rest of the uh, entities involved, the contractors, uh, um, putting in the duck bank system, mm -hmm. the engineers, the, uh, it, it was really, um, it was it really their attitude as to how this is going to happen, and it is going to happen really made us all focus on the fact that you're right, this is going to happen and we're going to, we all work together to make sure it did. Well, Chris, uh, you know, proceed as if success is inevitable, right? Everybody knew that. <laughs> That's the way it is. It's going to get done. And I think, um, you know, you're, you're telling me that this was unusual, I think, because Roger and Amy were there at every step of the way. And, and that motivated you all. Let's keep on uh, not that not that you need motivation at Dominion Energy. We're going to get the project done, but but I mean you you are um, you know you, you're the you're the manager 
You're the project right. manager. That's right. Roger's the so Matt, going back to going back to Matt, who was the utilities guy. This, um, how unusual was this for you to have your bosses, Amy and Roger, right there? Yes, it was quite unique having Amy and Roger there. Um, one of the what happened was they brought a very hands-on approach to this project. So the way they had the energy, the can-do. Uh, attitude that drove us really to find resolutions in the design and as well as into the construction phase. Um, normally infrastructure projects like this, you build the groundwork and then you put the bridges or the highway on top of it. And we're not having to bounce around historic structures and historic walls. Um, and then within a 24 foot pavement section. So this was very unique. I've been doing utilities for 30 some odd years and I've never dealt with anything this this complex and it was amazing how quickly it got done how efficient and we moved forward because everybody was focused with the leadership of Amy and Roger to find a successful outcome. Now, this past spring, Route 9 reopened, and in June, I was so happy to be there for the celebration and ribbon cutting. Take a look. And with the power vested in me as the mayor of Hillsborough, I now officially proclaim our main street open, open, wide open. One, two, three, two. Thank you, everyone. Phyllis Randall and Mayor Vance, when you look at this new, beautiful Route 9 through Hillsboro, what are you thinking? Well, what I think is the, the power of two things. One, small towns and the voices of the people in the small towns to get big things done. And two, regional cooperation. This could not have been done without MBTA and the regional cooperation. So those things together, people, small towns, regional cooperations, it gets done. Amazing, amazing teamwork. And uh, really proving the point, if you really work together, uh, look for common sense answers, you can do great things. So we're really happy. So I'd like to bring in Monica Backman. She is the uh, CEO of the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. She's with us on Zoom. Hey, Monica. Hi, how are you? Good. Hey, tell us how unusual this was. You saw Amy and Roger come to meetings, and uh, did you ever just wonder, like, what is going on? This is a tiny little town. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. They had a lot of energy. You know, I'm introduced to a lot of people who need money for various projects. But one thing that I have to credit Amy and Roger for they work the process. They really work the process. Everything we ask them to do in order to put them in the best position possible to be awarded funding, they did. You know, oftentimes people hear, oh, it's a town of 100 and some odd people. They don't have traffic congestion, but it's Route 9. Route 9 is a primary arterial. So they had a lot of traffic congestion, but they didn't have a lot of resources to address the issue. And what Roger and Amy really, really did that really put them over the top to put the, the authority in the position to award funding, they got the citizens out. Mm -hmm. Public comment and getting your citizens out to speak to the merits of your project and why your project needs funding really, really made the difference. I think when we had our public hearing on this draft funding program, Roger and Amy, they had a bus or van they had half the town and then some out at the public hearing presenting and testifying before the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. And that really made the difference. I would often look at them and say, man, are they tired? How can they be everywhere? <laughs> everywhere I was, I saw Roger and Amy. Right, right. That's so exciting. I know the authority gave uh, a $12 million, uh, to, the pro $12 million right. to the project and you've got uh, other state monies and, and things right like and that. Loudoun County yeah. was uh, about about 10 to 12 million as well mm. and in addition to the road also for water and sewer Loudoun was a big supporter there we haven't mentioned the pandemic because because of the pandemic I don't know if that you you were able to close the whole road 
Was right. that planned or did that happen because of the pandemic? Well, we originally had, uh, it would, took a long time, but uh, you know, be, given the conditions under which people would have to work, uh, we did uh, get uh, VDOT to agree to 60 days of full road closure throughout the 14 months of, of the project. Wow. But when the pandemic hit, uh, suddenly there was, there was very little traffic using the road. Mm -hmm. We all were able to pivot we also had a major water, mine, water main collapse at that time, so we were out of water. So we had to really pivot, and I credit uh, everybody involved from uh, you know, Dominion, Verizon, Archer Western, and, and Volkert, and VDOT. You know, we were able to turn it around, and we, had, we closed the road on May 4th mm -hmm. completely uh, and reopened it to, to some traffic on August 15th. But within that time, they were able to do a tremendous amount of that heavy excavation work to get everything underground. Really fantastic. Monica, is this something other rural towns can learn from? Absolutely. And, and not only the town, cities, some counties as well, yeah. because it really shows the process playing out as it should. We weren't focused on the town being a small town. We were focused on addressing a longstanding issue being congestion. And then we got a bonus, at least for the region, economic development. This not only benefits the town of Hillsborough, it benefits Loudoun County, it benefits other parts of the region. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is a model. And I hope Amy and Roger speak to other localities. I know at the VML conference, they had the town of Dumfries there who were asking um, questions as to how they became project managers. But I think this is definitely right. a, a pattern for, how the, uh, for other rural towns to follow. So how much money did you all save by being your own project managers, Roger? Well, by being project managers and by uh, being able to combine all the projects together and to have the maintenance of traffic plan that we had, which really truncated the project from mm -hmm. 36 months to 14 months, uh, we estimate 10 to $12 million uh, off of what it would have otherwise cost and that's being conservative mm -hmm. if you were to look at these as individual projects mm -hmm. and years, years of disruption mm -hmm. on that road. Well, congratulations to you and Amy. And I want to thank everyone who joined in, Monica and Chris and Matt. Thank you all so much for this uh, really, really inc incredible thank discussion you. about an incredible project and thing you, thing you did out there in Hillsboro. It's just, uh, it, it's beautiful, absolutely well, beautiful. Come visit. I, I have and I will, I will and you have saved Hillsboro, so it's wonderful. And I wanna thank everyone for watching. We hope you join us next time for Actions Speak Louder. I'm Peggy Fox, be safe.